All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back for another awesome episode. I have Jeff Dalzell in the house with us today. He is the owner of the Fit Parent Project and Jeff Dalzell Coaching, and he is the host of the Fit Parent Podcast. If you guys need fitness, nutrition, pretty much any tips when it comes to parenting and not losing your shit, Jeff is your guy. So- <laughs> Jeff, welcome to the show. <laughs> not, not losing your shit. That might not be my shock soon. But... Well, maybe not losing your shit, but still getting the job done. Yeah, doing that. Yeah. My 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 at least my four-year-old son would tell you that uh I'm I'm very mean to him. I yell at him all the time, which is basically anytime I tell him no. You're you yelled at me. No, I just I told you that you couldn't have an eighth package of fruit <laughs> snacks today like oh man. so mean such a mean dad is is what i am <laughs> you can't stay up until midnight <laughs> hey i mean rules are rules just gotta yeah, gotta set gotta them and hold the line <laughs> hold the line basically just like the hodor of parents <laughs> just hold on you crack the door just a little bit they're gonna come barreling through there man exactly exactly uh but before we get too too off track let's yeah. start it off right now i've wanted to do this for the past couple episodes and i keep forgetting and i think it's fitting that i started off with you now we have a tradition at the end of the podcast but i'm starting yeah. a new one in the beginning of the podcast because uh, okay. i was listening to Tosh.0. He's got oh, a great podcast, yeah. by the way, if anybody he's, wants to check it out after this. Funny. Yeah. And he starts off every episode with, all right, first question, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> now, I'm not going to ask you if you believe in ghosts, but right. I'm going to start it off with, do you believe in burpees? Oh. Do, all right, so this I actually have I have a strong opinion on burpees. I made it. I had a post about this. Uh, this is the great divide between coaches. This, so this is what I said about burpees burpees are the fitness equivalent of debt <laughs> all right some people can get really really rich using debt but most people are going to end up buried by it and you can absolutely get rich without using debt the risk reward for a lot of people is not there so some people can do burpees and they're perfectly fine. But most of those people are already in crazy good shape. And they're not the mechanism for most people to get in shape. You're better off doing each of the components. In, in. So I think anybody who's programming burpees for a general fitness person is just being lazy and just trying to make you tired. That's my opinion on burpees. I love the nuance there and I love the comparison <laughs> too, <laughs> but I will give some coaches credit. Sometimes when you're just so young in the process and you have been programming for a while, Dude, you're like, Hey, burpees got to go in somewhere. And I it's put just burpees a more in early on. thing. I put burpees in early on. Like, so it's not necessarily yep. it's, it's, it's where you don't necessarily know something better to do. And, and again, are they, are they inherently evil? No. Are they mostly dumb? Yeah. Are there a lot of better cho choices? 100%. 100%. That's fair. I mean, totally all you have fair. to do is like coach a group fitness class, which I did. Like the thing that killed it for me was like a month and a half into coaching group fitness, you know, and small group training and stuff like that with general population with people with varying degrees of, of fitness to be like, I can't make three quarters of the people in this room do this without looking like the the Mike Boyle window test is the thing that's in my head. Mike Boyle is like yep. the leader. It's like if somebody's walking by the window of your gym or your class and they look in, do the people in your class look like they know what they're doing? I couldn't. I couldn't make burpees past the window test. And I'm a I'm a good coach. I can't make burpees past the window test. So I was like, I yeah. gotta well, I gotta pick exercises that are hard to do wrong, basically. I think that's a good way to think of it because if you walk past like elite level CrossFitters, they're gonna make burpees look awesome. Now 100%. if you walk past a group of 20 like middle-aged people that have an injury history that don't work out regularly, it's gonna look like a shit show. Like for nine out of ten of those people, yeah. one might nail it, but it is what it is. <laughs> yep. And that's and that's debt. That is debt 
to a T. Like you can have 10 people who do the like the the HELOC refinance, roll it into the next house, you know, stacking thing where all of a sudden you just like you have debt on 50 houses and you're renting all of them and you have this crazy cash flow. But for every one of those people who looks great on Instagram and says, I have $10 million in debt and a net worth of 50 million and I cash flow and I retired at 32, there are a bunch of people like Dave Ramsey who did all that. And the first time he went bankrupt, he did all that. He out leveraged himself and the bank called his notes and he lost everything. So it's like, it can, it can work for some people. But the downside is a lot higher, and there are other mediums where it's like, all right, if you're if you're willing to not just do the thing that looks kind of flashy, <laughs> you you're probably yeah. gonna be end up doing it for longer than because also they just suck too. Like they're also just not fun. So that's the other part of it is like, if it's not gonna be fun, like let's pick something else that's not fun that's less likely to ruin you. Yeah, I forget who I had on. I was just like, let's just say all of a sudden burpees went extinct and like you could never, ever program one ever again. How many people are honestly going to be like, no, (laughs) it's so devastating. (laughs) (laughs) I think it's like this weird thing where people feel like they have to. Otherwise, they're like never going to be able to achieve what they want to achieve. No. Uh, Well, and yeah. Yeah, I have. There, there are many ways to achieve fitness. And I yeah. think burpees are a celebration of one's fitness level, not the mechanism to get there. Yep, exactly. Now, before we get too off track when it comes to the burpee side of things, I know <laughs> we're, when it... we're, I don't know how far in the podcast, <laughs> which is I might have to burpees. Get, <laughs> might just have to remove that first question. This is going to consume like <laughs> the all whole thing. Yeah. You, you, Cause people are going to have really strong opinions on it. And you're going <laughs> to, yes. yes. Oh God. Yeah. No, I, you know what? Screw it. I'm keeping it in. I want to see what happens. But the reason that I wanted to bring Jeff on again, and honestly, I think Jeff, you might be my first repeat. I'm not sure if I had Al on twice, but I'm pretty sure you're the first repeat and I'm happy that you are. So I brought you on because in all honesty, I'm like, I just want to talk to Jeff again, but it just so happens it comes at a perfect time because you are getting ready to get, uh, like cut for a vacation. So I figured, why don't we just tell the people what you're going to be doing, how you plan out your dieting phase. And then they could just say, Hey, I'm going to do what Jeff did and I'm going to apply it to my own situation so that they can get the results that they want. For sure. So I'm doing this not in a way that I would recommend most people do it. So I'm going to preface all of this with that. And then second thing that I'll say is I'm doing this for two weeks. So like my, uh, my wife and I are going to go for away for our first uh, trip since our, our twins were born. We have a four-year-old and then twin two-and-a-half-year-olds, almost three-year-olds now. Um, and we haven't gone away for more than a night since they were born. So we're going to go away for a few nights here in a couple of weeks. And, um, and I was like, okay, two weeks, like, why not? You know, let me let me do a little bit. And again, I'm I'm perfectly fine to go on vacation like I am. I, I kind of walk around at, at the, the fitness level that I want to, but... Um, it's like, you know what? Hey, let's, let's, as a challenge for me, um, to, you know, just as something to work toward, you know, we've been doing, you've been doing this as long as, as some people have, I'm like, all right, I grasp at anything to kind of, you know, re reinvigorate my, you know, my gumption for it. Um, and, and it's short term, so I can, I can be like super dialed basically, um, and, and kind of a little bit stricter than I might otherwise be. So those are kind of my, my caveats. And I'll also say that, uh, this is most of this I do already. Um, it's just a matter of the degree to which I'm adhering to it, if that makes any sense. So that's the way that I think about a lot when it comes to fitness and what I talk about a lot with clients. I don't know if we, you and I have talked about this. I think about it as dials, right? Like volume up and volume down, but you're never power off. So like with everything, there's seasons where, Hey, the volumes like we're rocking and rolling 
and and everything's we're dialing it up we have the the time and the space and so i'm going to be laser focused on stuff and there's times where it's just background noise you know and we're just kind of doing the bare minimums and and sometimes that's the case and so uh this is going to be a high volume we're, we're rocking out to acdc in the car right now we're bringing um, this shit up to 11 yeah let's do <laughs> so um i i gotta remember what i said i was gonna do but basically uh well, this is good because you have it written the, down. The, Most people have, are like, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And then I'm like, shit, what I, I do I have it written down, do? but I'm going to see if I can do it from memory. And then I'll, I'll check what I, I'll check what I wrote. So um, again, I do this all the time. Anyway, this is always one, but it's, it's going to be protein and fiber at every meal. I do this at with of the six times that I eat a day. So I eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. I have a morning snack and eat an afternoon snack and an evening snack. That's just how it works for me. Cause I'm hungry. I'm hungry two hours after I eat Thanksgiving dinner. So the idea of like doing three squares or intermittent fasting just doesn't work for me. Cause I'm always hungry. So I, I eat those, you know, every three hours or so, cause I'm always hungry. So for five of the six meals every day, that's always the case. There's always protein and there's always fiber. I know you do protein fiber color. Is that what, how you call it? Yeah, um, we're pretty much all preaching the same thing. Because yeah, you thing. get I, your fiber, you're going to get it from yeah, probably color. fruits and veggies yeah. as well as yeah. bread and stuff like that. Something like that, yeah. So mine is, uh, I always have a protein and a fiber source. Um, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I typically have you know an additional carb source, whatever that happens to be, usually fibrous. Um, and then my evening snack might be you know, just fruit, or it could be, you know, Halo Top ice cream. It could be a margarita. Who knows what that is? You know, it's it could be any of those things on a, on any given day. Um, bowl cereal, something like that. Um, that's kind of maintenance. So, but that's not going to be the case anymore. So I'm gonna just it's gonna be protein and, and fiber for every time that I eat. Um, no, I'm gonna do no. I'm not a big snacker outside of that structure. Um, but I'm gonna do particularly no snacks and drinks like outside of that structure, basically like nothing off plan um, with two exceptions. So I think this is the biggest thing that a lot of people do is like, we think that we're going to be like, even two weeks, but like, well, I could be perfect for two weeks. No, we can't like, no, we can't. And so I, in two weeks, right. Again, I'm going to eat six times a day, seven days a week. That's 42 times for two weeks. That's 84 times I'm going to eat in the next two weeks. Two of those times are going to be off plan, and I know what they are. My have I have friends coming in from out of town starting this weekend for a week, so we're gonna go on a, a group date with them and another one of our friends who live here. That's gonna be one of them. We're gonna go out to eat, and then the husband, the, my buddy, who's coming up, we're gonna go golfing, and so I'm gonna have a couple of drinks on the golf course. Those are my those are, now. Those are gonna go in place of you know, the snack or the meal or whatever it is, but I'm just going to be a little bit less restrictive. And again, I'm still going to have protein when I go out to dinner, like, but it might be, you know, I don't know where we're going to go, but it could be. Yeah. It's not going to be the fattiest steak, but it's going to be decent. It's going to be decent, right? It could be, you know, whatever short rib and something, you know, something, I don't know where we're going, Yeah, but so those are planned. And I think that's the difference for, for with a lot of people is is or like I did a I did a summer challenge template or like a lean summer blueprint that I put out I did a winter challenge you know from like through Thanksgiving and like the last six weeks of the year the eight weeks of summer and if you look at that and you do the math on it and you're like all right I'm gonna pick ahead of time the meals that I'm gonna let be what they are then it's a, it's a lot easier to like look forward to it versus be like super strict. So like the last six weeks of the year, for instance, you're like, all right, I got Thanksgiving, I got Christmas Eve, I got Christmas Day, you know, I got a couple of parties, you know, I could plan these out right now. And so then it's just like, all right, I'm just going to be on plan for all these other times. So then I don't feel guilty when I'm a little bit off plan these other times. And I just keep still in mind, I'm still going to have protein and fiber at those meals, but I might have more calories or drink or whatever it is. The quality might be a little bit different. Um, so that's, that's, those are kind of the biggest one, like in terms of strictness, I'm going to do four total body workouts, uh, a week. I've been doing a little bit of a, uh, upper body, lower body, upper body 
you know, back and forth, but I'm going to do total body. Um, mm -hmm. And I had been doing two or three workouts a week is what I've kind of been doing all summer. So I'm just going to ratchet it up to four um, and I'm going to go to total body. We can talk about the logic behind that at some point if we want to. Um, I think that there's benefits to all. I'm going to try to hit 12,000 steps. Normally I have like a, a minimum daily of 7,500. I average, um, I average probably closer to 10, but I'm going to hit 12,000 or more every day. So I'm not going to average 12,000. I'm going to hit it 12,000 is my minimum every day for two weeks. Right. I can, I like the concreteness of that where it's like, yeah, it's a target. It's like, no, that's like, we're hitting 12,000 and then some. Yeah. It's a floor. And I know I can do it because I did it back. Did I tell you about this ice cream thing that I did? Do you remember this? I did it almost a year ago. This yeah, was, this I was, vaguely you'll, remember. You'll appreciate this, but this was like the benefits of walking. So I did this, uh, this experiment and this was uh, a top five dumb decision I've done in my adult life. Do not recommend this little aside. <laughs> so I did this like last September, maybe October, um, where I was trying to tout the benefits of walking. And so I was like, I'm going to walk 15,000 steps a day. And I'm going to in, in that same structure that I normally, I'm going to eat a normal day, but one of my snacks is going to be a pint of Ben and Jerry's ice cream every day. And, and were these were these the traditional kind where like it's like real real Ben and like, Jerry's like, like seven hundred plus calories the per tonight the the least calories in one of the ones that I ate was nine hundred and eighty calories. I was gonna say the most like the was twelve hundred. The tonight dough was like twelve fifty. Yep. Now uh, don't get me wrong, it was delicious. Oh, but it was, it, it felt like, <laughs> but I used to do this all the time when I was in college. So I was like, I'll be fine. No problem. I, had, and I'm not a big ice cream guy anyway. Like I like ice cream, but I'm not like, oh, this is gonna give me my, like if, if, you know, yeah. like I, I would, you don't like crave dessert. it, but it's like, if it's no. around, if, if it's, it's available, around, it's like, but I was just like, this yeah. is easy. Like it, if I, in hindsight, if I had done this experiment with like, I'm going to basically just eat an extra thousand calories or i could have done ice cream one day i could have done a couple of donuts i could have, i would have been fine right but i was like simplicity everybody's gonna understand the rules Fifteen thousand steps pint of ben and jerry's right like very simple experience and the goal or the idea was the hypothesis was i'm gonna not gain weight in doing this uh you played uh, it smart you went the maintenance route i'm like Tell me you tried losing weight. Well, I did lose weight. I did. Hey, there you go. I did lose weight. But I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove to you that like I can, you know, you can do this kind of bonkers thing. But the problem was I had to stop after four days. I didn't even make it the full week because my my stomach hurt so much because I didn't eat I and I'm not a lactose, I've never had an issue with lactose. My home because like you think about how much that is, like how much heavy cream that was. It's a, a lot, lot of dairy. It was it was a lot, and uh, and so I had to stop after four days. And for I'm not exaggerating, ten days afterward, my stomach hurt like to the point where I went to the emergency room. I was because I was like, did I like really like I couldn't sleep. I was like, did I ruin my like, or is this actually that, or is is this masking something else? Like, did I do I have appendicitis and I'm just thinking that I have? You know, I was like, it was <laughs> that level of uncomfortable. Jeez. Which, by the way, just one of the, I'm sure people still like the doctors still tell the story of the dumb idiot who came in with you know because he ate too much ice cream and he thought he I, was done. And I would hope in the that morning, the doctor would whip out uh uh what is it uh. Oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. But the line from the Avengers where the guy, the Hulk crashes mm -hmm. down, turns into Mark Ruffalo mm -hmm. and he's like, son, mm -hmm. you have a condition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I've never had a doctor laugh in my face before. I had three <laughs> in a row. Just I'm like, they're like, what brings you in today? I'm like, well, I'm an idiot. I'm going to start with this. Recognize that I'm an idiot. And I also recognize this is pretty dumb, but I can't sleep. And I'm not sure if I'm dying. So <laughs> I just I just need confirmation. Like got an ultrasound. They're like, you're just incredibly inflamed because you ate too much ice cream. And uh, so I didn't have and this is timely because it was a week ago. So it was mm -hmm. it was 10 months, 10 plus months that I went without having real ice cream. 
because I was so scared of it. I was like, I'm terrified that I'm going to. And so it was, it was like a week and a half ago. I had like my first real ice cream again. And I and I did OK. It was death by chocolate, which was maybe a, a it was a scary name. I was like, this could be you're, the end of my ice you're cream. Like, there's journey. only one way to really <laughs> test. Yeah, this. just let's go. <laughs> let's go all in and see where we're at. And I was OK. I get. But the again, fear, the though. benefit of with, this that happened the, with me with Bonza pasta. Just yeah couldn't keep it down mm-hmm. and i'm like never again haven't mm-hmm. tried it since and you're just like will my life really be that bad without it? no and i would have been fine honestly i would have been fine if i never could have it again but my wife brought it home for me because she and my son went to get ice cream uh-huh. and he is like he's very my older son is you know he's four but he's he's very sweet very thoughtful like loves to include other people and like give other people things like he's he's one of those people that like likes giving gifts more than he likes receiving them. So more excited than like getting ice cream for himself. Like he had two bites of ice cream. He was really excited to bring daddy ice cream. And so he brought me ice cream and then he's like looking at me, like expecting me to eat it kind of thing. And it's like, okay, I kind of have to, you know, like try to explain yeah. to a four year old, like this makes daddy, you know, I could have, but it was like, all right, let's just, let's give this a whirl. And we were fine. Um, um that was my You're be getting some great father's day gifts coming up then if that's Dude. his mentality i mean they're 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 generally you know he he like he'll make a drawing and he'll be like daddy look i made this for you and it's you know it's a, just a bunch of scribbles and you know you'd yeah. be like this is you you got me the mona lisa like thank you so much like this yep. is amazing and you're gonna be crying like a little baby oh in like dude 10, i i in years when you find that in the middle of nowhere in your basement dude it's i'm crying now like i it's <laughs> it's it just shifted i'm like why am i so emotional about everything like this when he brought me the ice cream i was like really buddy he's like dad i wanted you to have some i was so and i was like really buddy and and my wife looked at me and she's like it was all his idea like he wanted to make sure you had some and uh so i was like all right just this is the portion where the tears come out i can already feel the listeners some of them tearing up right now (laughs) it's uh it's wild parenting is wild i could i could go down that road but i won't do it i won't yeah. we'll, we'll keep it lighthearted but, for right now yeah but uh, so that was that was the back. logic behind <laughs> yeah that was the logic behind the walking thing is because i've i've gotcha. certainly seen the the value of it and i know i can hit that amount of steps in a day without like killing myself um i have to be conscious of it but i can i can definitely do it um and just so, for somebody who's listening and they're like man my step count is way lower than that like what are some things like some anchors that get you there that you're just like if i do x y and z or my yeah. day looks like this what what gets you to that 12k i'm a big like micro movement kind of person so like i do like every 25 minutes i have 5 minutes off basically um and so that's like all right i'm going to grab a snack i'm going to go to the bathroom i'm going to just take two laps around my house sort of thing um i'm i'm always chasing my kids so i know that if by the time my kids get like at 4 p.m at the latest i start dad duty it's usually closer to three but if at 4 p.m i'm at like on a normal day if i if i'm at 4 p.m i'm at seven thousand steps by the time they go to bed i'm at 10 like without without even trying just like chasing them around the house up and down the stairs 17 times at bedtime like (laughs) You know, you got to put a diaper on kids are running away with a butt, you know, just a naked butt. And you're like, you're going to pee all over everything and you're going to think it's hysterical. Like, that's yeah. just, you know, back and forth to the kitchen 50 times. So a lot of it's just like I'm I'm just constantly moving and showing up, you know, it, it, trying to show up as the dad that I want to be. Um, and real quick, before you go on to the next thing, that kind of makes you think a little bit about like, I know on this show, we talk a lot about how lifestyles change Mm -hmm. how many people especially like the ladies the moms that are listening right now hit that menopause stage and they're like oh it's because of menopause that i'm gaining the weight or whatever Mm -hmm. and it's like have you taken into account that you're not chasing little kids around anymore and maybe because your kids are in high school college and you're not doing as much movement like that that probably plays a role dude 100 percent. that's the conversation it's it's i actually had this conversation with a client earlier today 
because uh, we were talking through uh we were talking through she's got a crazy busy week and she was saying something along the lines of like so she's like a uh i don't know like a seamstress or whatever it is and so she was doing and she was like i got ten thousand steps yesterday even though i was like crazy busy prepping for this thing and she was like i think a lot of it was like with my arms like i was moving things around i'm like dude movement is movement but yeah. we were going through now is there maybe a a tick more value in walking versus just regular movement sure but like is it dramatic no just like it's not like running is not dramatically better in terms of fat loss than walking is i think there's probably benefits you can make the argument that walking is better for fat loss than running is um i have made that argument uh, a couple of times <laughs> It's all uh, that non-exercise activity. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's the thing. And so like when we think about metabolism, people are like, oh, my metabolism slowed down. It's like, no, you slowed down. Like you stopped doing the things that you used to do. And it's like, man, why, why, you know, when I was in college, there's a, have you ever seen the show, The West Wing? I have not, but I know I get the gist of it. Yeah. Well, so it has nothing to do with the context of the show, but um, really like the show. You would, I think you would like it, but um there's a quote where uh, the ge surgeon general is talking to one of the characters and, you know, he was like, she was like, you, your diet needs to get better. And he's like, I'm, I'm in great shape. And she's like, no, you're not. And he's like, I, my diet's fantastic. I eat, I ate this way when I was in college. And she was like, you were 19 in college. <laughs> you could have, you could have ate, you know, garbage and your body would have just gone through it because you're moving all the time. You're walking back and forth to classes. It's like, Oh, why why am I not in the same shape I was in high school? It's like, well, you played three sports and your idea of a good time was riding your bikes to the store to buy things that your parents wouldn't approve of. Yeah. Like and if you went and if you went to a school like I did, like West Virginia is nothing but hills and mm -hmm. everything's within walking distance, you're burning thousands of calories just going to get a case of beer. <laughs> 100% and you're just you're just moving all the time so it's it's less of like you know what happened is you sat at a desk for 30 years and you just stopped moving as much and maybe you lost some muscle tone for sure but it's not like when we talk about menopause or or any of the hormonal things that could cause you know weight loss to slow down or weight gain to happen it's a lot the hormones are not causing your metabolism to slow down and even like old age like when people say oh your metabolism slows down with age it's not like that dramatic just if you compare like a person who's active to the same person who's active at that same activity level it's that we just our hormones are all over the place we feel tired and so we don't move as much yep that's and like so that the whole actually... i know mental hands mental hanselman's put up a really good post about that like people with like low thyroid function, mm -hmm. they tested to see what the difference was in, in calories burned. And it was like one to 200 calories a day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how long have we been hearing? Oh, my thyroid is messed up. Like I just can't lose weight. And it's like, well, maybe because you feel like shit, you don't move as much. Yeah. And that is really the reason. And then this is making it harder, but it's not making it impossible. 100%. The, the factors are unique to each person, right? Like, uh, I forget who, who talked about it, but like the, the genetic disposition to hunger and like satisfaction due to food and some of like the childhood trauma and all the things associated with that, like those are unique to each person, but it doesn't change the laws of thermodynamics, which are like, it's, it's physics. Like you might, like it might be harder for you to not eat as much food. And that's a hundred percent true. It might be harder for you to get yourself up to move. And that's a hundred percent true. Like, I'm not saying that those aren't obstacles, but the math is still the math. And we still like, so I, it is, it is certainly easier for me in some ways than it is for somebody else. But I also have some hurdles that somebody else doesn't have. I have three kids four and under. And so it is like logistically. I mean, you have the same 24 hours in the day as me, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just triggered everybody. Yeah, just ruined everybody. <laughs> no, but it's just, it's it's a different struggle, right? It's a different struggle. This is, I've talked about this all the time. It's it's a little bit the of the road not traveled, right? It's like, well, what would my life be like if X? And it's like, well, in some ways it might be 
better, but there's other drawbacks to that. Like I, I think about this uh, an example, and this might be where we do waterworks, but I think about this because this is going to be my next podcast episode uh, that I do is, is the road not travel. When I think about kids and, and that sort of thing, um, if I, and we're going totally off the rails, but it'll bring it back to, I think the last two things here. Um, I was a teacher for five years before I became a coach. And so I have moments, especially when we go to these conferences with people who like, you know, you think about Jordan Syed or somebody like that, who's my age, Jordan might even be a year younger than me. And, yeah. but he's been doing it for like 15 years. Cause he started yeah, when he was, since 18. he was like 18. Yeah. Yeah. He's been training people like since, you know, 16, who knows, you know, Ben Bruno, who's two years older than me, three years older than me, who's been doing it for 17 years. And you're like, man, what would have happened if I started then? And I took a coaching class my sophomore year of college and I loved it. And I was a football coach for, for seven years and did kinesiology and I really loved it. And it was like, there was a possibility that I was going to go down that path in college, but I stayed with teaching. And I, there's part of me that wonders like, Oh, what, where would my career be if I had started 10 years earlier uh, or five years earlier, even and not taught. Well, there's a couple of things with that. One, I think that in some ways the business might've chewed me up and spat me out because as a 22 year old, I was a pretty arrogant, selfish person. And so weren't we all the idea that like, I was going to be able to like humbly coach real adults was going to, you know, might not have worked out the best. So I think teaching, and I think I became a better communicator and all of these things from having to talk to people who don't want to listen to what I have to say and high school students ask questions and you know all of that stuff is relevant to coaching but the other thing of it is i met my wife in college in a teaching class what would have happened if i had changed majors i wouldn't have met my wife my entire life wouldn't have been what it is and would i be who i am at this point without my wife 100 percent no i met my wife 14 years ago like Half of my life basically has been in conjunction with Megan. And I wouldn't be who I am as a coach, as a person without her. Now, I don't know what, you know, the multiverse version of Jeff would have looked like. But I think that where I am is a is a direct result of that. Or I think, you know, to go one step further with that, I think about my coaching business and there's there's a tension for me at times with with my business which is like man i wish i had more hours in the day to work like if i didn't have kids man i could work you know all the time or i would have less interruptions or you know i work the most days that i've worked in a week since my twins have been born has been 3 like that's a that's a that was a good week for me the last 3 years i might get 4 days a week this upcoming year that that's a that would be a good week. And, and is so that counting I, the in person or are we no longer in person? I, I only do three small group sessions uh in person okay. a week now. So it's 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 dropped down considerably. Um but I have some news for you after we hang up, actually, some that you'll appreciate. Uh Sounds it's like not plan. public yet, so I can't put it on here, but uh, I'll tell you. Uh, but, sucker is uh, listening. I'm getting the 411. Uh, um <laughs> but when I look at other people in the business, even you, right. Who like, who don't have kids. And, and I'm like, man, like, or like Mike Levine is, a, is the person I think of a lot who just like mm -hmm. works like an absolute animal. And I'm like, dude crushes his business. Like his business is absolutely fantastic because he can work all the time. And I'm like, I can't do that. I'm like, Oh man, where would my business be if I didn't have kids? And, and that's just an honest, it, it sounds sucky to say, but like, I don't think there's a parent out there who hasn't had a moment where we thought about the road not traveled, like what would life look like? And if you have good for you, but like every parent that I've ever talked to has had moments where we think that and you're like, oh man, or we'll go even more honest. Like, was this a mistake? <laughs> like, did, I, did I make <laughs> an error? Um, not to say that you don't love your kids because I absolutely adore my kids, but it's freaking hard. But the flip side of it is this. I coach parents. I coach moms primarily who 
oftentimes are the primary caregivers for their kids. And right now in the current season of life that we are in, I am the primary caregiver for my kids. It doesn't mean that my wife isn't incredibly involved, but she's got a little bit more of a less flexible or a little bit less of a flexible job. So I catch more of the, I have a day or two a week where I have that. Would, would I be able to coach those parents nearly as well? I don't know, but I don't, my business is, is where it is oftentimes because I can relate and I think I'm a better coach for it. And so in some ways, like you think about the road, not travel, it's like, all right, where would it be if I did this or I didn't do that? And so we could think about these things as like, are these are hurdles for me and they are, but there also can be superpowers depending on how you, the lens through which you look at them. So like my superpower is in business is the fact that I am a primary caregiver for my kids. And it took a long time for me to embrace that. It's not that I work 90 hours a week. It's that I've built a business that is respected and I'm, I take good care of my clients and I have a, a solid business and on my best week, I'll work 28 hours <laughs> And on most weeks, I'll work 15 or less. Yeah. A lot of people listening right now are like, so how do I become a coach? <laughs> <laughs> well, it took a long time to get there, right. I built it a little bit when I had fewer kids and things like that. But it's not, it's not, I'm not rolling in it by any means, you know, right now. No. But it's, but, I've, I've, but I like how you brought it to that place of like, there are pros and cons because I think a lot of people do get caught up in like the story that they tell themselves. And they're just yeah. like, I've got so much going on. I can't do this. I can't mm -hmm. do that. And it's like, you're, you're right you can't do this or you can't do that, but what can you do? Like what superpowers have you gained? Like you're mm -hmm. probably a hell of a lot more efficient than somebody who's got zero time at all that gets the same amount of work done. Well, it's like, it's like the, uh, the two examples of, of, you know, you have two athletes, right? One who is just like naturally gifted, but doesn't work hard or the one who works hard. It's like, listen, at some point, like, this guy is going to run out of talent. You know, he's not going to be able to just keep up. And so he's going to either have to adapt or whatever. So like, it might be easier for somebody in one circumstance, but for somebody else, they have to do it. Like some of, I'm sure you've had this. Some of my best, like, you know, in terms of like dramatic physical transformation, success stories have come when people have gotten injured at the very beginning of working with it like, or right before working together. Like I had a, a fluke accident where somebody slipped on ice and broke their elbow a week into working together and was in like a, so like couldn't like do a lot of exercising, like was limited and only could walk and focus on his nutrition. And he lost 15 pounds in 12 weeks because he was, he wasn't distracted by all the other things that he needed to do. Like his superpower was like, I don't have to worry about working out. Like, I'm not going to, or another mom who had a hurt back before we started working together ended up having surgery 12 weeks in. She lost 20 pounds in 12 weeks just doing, because like she walking felt good for her back. So she walked mm -hmm. a bunch and she focused on her nutrition. And so, so like that, what that's exterior cool you say could that. have been, exterior could have been like, oh, this is my hurdle. Like, and I'm not going to be able to do it. And then you're like, oh, well, that's actually my superpower because I'm not distracted by other things and I can laser focus on these other things. Yep. Yep. I totally get that because honestly, that's why my step count is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like without it, my back kills me because I've always mm -hmm. had back stuff going on since I was mm -hmm. little. So, I mean, you can take your situation and figure out little hacks like that. It's like mm -hmm. little motivation there. Yeah, if you're going through your hormonal stuff and you're like, oh man, my hormones are like, you're going to have to dial it in more. But the flip side of that, once you figure it out, you're going to be in a way better shape than the person who kind of just happened into it and just is like, oh, I just, you know, I ate two salads and I lost six pounds. That person didn't actually change their life. And so they might have to do that all over again. Versus if you have to take the like kind of long, hard road to do it, you're going to actually change what it is that you're doing and you're not going to have to do it again because it's yeah. going to, you're not going to 
accidentally make the progress. You're going to have to have done all of the work that is necessary in order to make the progress that you're looking for. Exactly. And you have that instant feedback sometimes too. Like mm -hmm. you see with people that have like, say myself, glut uh, gluten intolerance, like you eat something you probably shouldn't be eating. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, bad, bad, bad. And that feeds into not making that same decision again and again and again, you do it less frequently. And that's why people think, Oh, if I want to lose weight, I just cut out gluten or dairy. It's like, no, those people just are like, they have that limitation that leads to better decisions because they don't want to feel like crap. And when you lead into, I want to feel good and make those decisions, mm -hmm. everything else tends to fall right into place. I, I was talking with a client about this because she sent me something in her weekly check-in. A lot of decisions in life can be made a lot easier if you just think about what will future me be proud of? Like, Will future me be happy with past me for this decision? That's like it's like Monday morning when you when you mail in Friday afternoon, and then you come in Monday morning and you're like, you freaking pass me, just a lazy son of a gun, and I have to now do all the stuff that that guy should have done on Friday, plus all the stuff I should have done, and you start your week off on a bad foot. It's like you know what? If I just do things that future me is going to be happy with, I'm way more likely to. So like when you think about the gluten stuff, it's like, will I regret this in two hours? Then yep. maybe I'm not going to go ahead and do it. Like maybe I'll, I'll make a decision that future me is going to be happy with. Yeah. And that's some positive motivation right there. You could just lean into that and just say, Hey, I'm going to put myself in this frame of mind, which is kind of like, I know a lot of the certs, like we go through, talk about like, for example, my girl's gone strong one with the menopause cert is like, come up with your menopause vision statement of like who you want to be, what you want to become. And it's kind of like that tomorrow version of yourself. Like, what are they going to be happy of? Like, what are the things that you need to do to make yourself uh, like happy with your efforts and then lead with that? Yeah. What would that person do? What would the person that you want to be do? So like, this is the be, do, have thing that I say a lot where it's like, all right, I want to have something, right? I want we because that's oftentimes when we think about goals, we think about the results that we want to have. Like we want to have achieve. Like I want to be fifty pounds, whatever. I want to feel whatever. Well, then, who do I have to be in order to have that? Right? Like what would what would the per like anybody who has that? What are they doing? Like you think about it financially. Like oh, I want to have a whatever. Uh, you know, a really nice house. Okay. Well, I want to have a really nice house. Well, what do I? What what are the people who have really nice houses? Who are they? What do they do? All right. Well, they probably make they do these things. They make these types of decisions. Well, I'm gonna start to do those things, even though I'm not necessarily yet the person who like that's the normal for. I'm gonna do those things, and the more I do those things, the more I'm gonna become the person who does those things. And after I become more of the person who does those things, and it becomes automatic, then the byproduct of that is, oh, well, I'm gonna have what they have. Because I am that person. But I focus on the action based on what that person would normally do. Yeah, this is kind of future version of me. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it comes down to destroying that past version of themselves. Like a lot of people don't yeah. want to let go of their former identity. But one of the best things you can do is let go of it. Now, easier said than done. But I mean, I know like... Ethan Suplee, for example, like famous actor. He was in, yeah. remember the Titans blow. Yeah. He was always the big fat guy, like five, 600 pounds at his max. And he lost like what, three, 400 pounds. And he's kept it off for years. Like he, every day he goes into the gym. He says, I killed my clone today. I killed my former self and I'm embracing the new version of me. You got to create that new identity. Yeah. And it starts with letting go of, of who you used to be. Like, the idea of, you know, the, the cliche of burn the boats, right? Like the burn the ship so you can't go back. It's like, give away the old clothes. You know what I mean? Like, that's one of my, that's like a thing that I do with my clients is when they start like dropping pant sizes. I'm like, all right, go give those away. Like, you're not going back. So don't let there be the option of returning back to where you were. You know what I mean? Like, we're always moving forward. Like, this is who you are now. 
and and it's it's like one of the best things that they do is like oh man like it's like almost <laughs> like a like a wall of honor like i'm gonna pin this up like this is what i used to you know like now they're dead like this is the deceased pants wall like these are no longer no longer belong to me exactly no. There's so no that, option. There's no backup of like, no. oh, just in case I go back to that. Yeah. So with that light, we're going to finally get to the last two things. But I think this is the idea. <laughs> um, the last two things that I'm doing are not like typical. I think they make people a little confused. Um, no phone in bed and read for 10 or more minutes every day. And again, these are things that the person that I want to be would do. So that's part of it. Part of it is um, they are going to reduce my stress and my they're going to improve my sleep, which are going to make everything else a lot better. Like the person that I so like this is what I, I always used to say. And this is this is such a, a strange thing. But like when I was a teacher, the person that I was over the summer was a lot closer to the person that I wanted to be, which is which is part of why I left teaching was because it was like, okay, like, because what did I do over the summer? I read a ton of books over the summer. Like I was, when I was teaching, it was like, I'm just on fumes by the end of the day. So I'd come and I'd, you know, sit in front of the TV, right? In the summer, I would like read books and I'd be active outside. And I would do, you know, I mean, like that was more of the person that I wanted to be, which is part of why I left teaching. But the person I want to be reads. I don't like the version of me that just scrolls on my phone endlessly. Like that's, it just feels not great but i do it because it's natural for me and so i'm but i'm not going to like over i'm not going to overshoot this to be like okay i can never be on my phone and i'm going to you know i'm going to put a reasonable boundary on it but the person that i want to be reads and i've done it in stretches um but it's not like okay like this is gangbusters i'm not i'm not currently at the place where i feel comfortable to or confident that i can read while my children are awake <laughs> you know like it's it's more than likely that one of them is gonna like it's not gonna be calm enough for me to focus on what i'm reading and more than likely one of them is gonna come and rip the book out of my hands before i finish a page <laughs> so this has got to be like after the kids go to bed or before they wake up i gotta do this but again what is it? What does it look like for me after I put my kids to bed to come downstairs? Like if all I have in me is to just scroll on my phone or watch Netflix, like I don't know if that's if that's how I want to draw up who I'm trying to be. But I'm not gonna be like, all right, every night after I put the kids to bed, I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna read, you know, an hour, I'm gonna finish two books by the end of the whatever. No, it's just ten minutes. Just ten minutes a day. And I read this in the book last night and it was so funny that I I did. And it's actually going to be my post tomorrow. So it'll probably be before this comes out, but um, I'm stealing this line, but I loved it because it's, it's related to this. Uh, nothing is normal until it is. So if you want to change, you have to go through the discomfort of it not being normal. Like new things are hard. So if you want to change your life, you have to change your normal. And that comes with, it's going to feel not normal for a while. And so last night, what I normally wanted to do was like the instinct for me was to do one thing. And I had to like, oh no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing this. And it was hard. I was like, oh man, like this is a dense, like if that's a, that's a single sentence in the book that I'm reading at night, like, you know, this wasn't, this wasn't a lighthearted book, but it was like, I'm just tired of like, you know, I'm not going to just read Harry Potter again. Cause that's just what I'll do. Um, I'm like, all right, I gotta, I gotta like, if I want to read these books, I gotta read these books. And so it was hard for me. I was like, I read the same paragraph eight times in a row. Cause I was like, I have no idea what that just said. <laughs> I still don't know what that said because I'm not, like totally engaged but i'm like i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna fight through i'm gonna do 10 minutes like good gracious i can do 10 minutes and and i don't think at the end of two weeks all of a sudden this is going to be the norm but certainly a step in the right direction because i want to go on vacation and read on vacation so i'm going to be a lot more likely to like spend my time reading on vacation versus just scrolling on my phone 
if I've at least opened the door to it in the two weeks leading up to it. Absolutely. And for anybody who's listening to all of that, like, wow, that sounds like hard, like behavior change is definitely a tough, tough thing. What Jeff just described is pretty much like the glossed over version of the four stages of competence. And if anybody's ever heard of that, there's like the uh, beginning, which is like the unconscious incompetence. Like you don't even know what you don't know. And then there's the conscious incompetence where you're like, all right, I know what I'm doing wrong. I just like, I'm not doing it. And then there's conscious competence, like you just said, where it's like, okay, I physically have to make myself do this, the hard thing over and over again. And then you get unconscious comp unconscious competence where it's like, I, this is my norm. This is what I do. Yeah. hundred percent. And that's where you know that like, that's where you know you're dialed in, right? When, when something becomes like your default mode. So that's the other thing. It's like, you think about the other fourth. So there were six things that I said there of those six things. Two of them are normal for me. I just have to, you know, just be focused on them. Two of them are a little bit more intense versions of my normal. And two of them are not normal. That feels reasonable to do for two weeks. And my wife was like, do you think that this is too much to ask? I'm like, no, it's not for me. It's not like for somebody else stepping in to do this might be if all of those things are not, you know, out of your normal, that's going to be a little bit too much. But like my main, my main focus are those last two things. Like the hardest thing for me are going to be those last two things. The rest of it is just, all right, I'm just going to be intentional with my decisions. And the rest of and most of it is just going to be like, all right, I'm just, I'm just doing what I normally do. And that, but you know, you're dialed in where it becomes like, okay, my, my factory default settings are this. It's like, what is your floor? What's, what's, what is you on your worst day? You know, and my worst day, you know, a couple of weeks ago was my wife's birthday. And so on my wife's birthday, we eat what my wife wants. You know, that's just kind of how it goes. Not a hundred percent of the meals, but it was like, okay, like we're going to do these things. Right. And so, yeah, naturally, but, but like that was a, you know, on paper, not great day of eating for me, you know, in terms of the quality of the food and the total number of calories or whatever, I didn't track anything, but like, I know what I did, you know, but I still, I still had 10,000 steps. I still had protein at every time that I ate. I still had fiber basically every time that I ate and I was intentional with my decisions. So like I didn't have the store-bought ice cream cake at, but I had some of the donuts that we had at breakfast because those were incredible. You know what I mean? <laughs> I had margaritas, but I didn't have the fries that came with my lunch. You know what I mean? Like it was, I, I indulged, but like that would have eight years ago, that would have been a pretty decent day. Honestly, like 10,000 steps, fiber and protein. That would have been a pretty solid day for me eight years ago. And now it's like, that's my floor. Like that's about as rough as it gets. So if you, you build, you your... built the skills, it's not yeah. just, oh, I do this when I'm dieting. It's, oh, I actually hold on to these after the fact. <laughs> yeah. And so that's why I talk about the dialing up and the dialing down. Like when I dial it down, it's there's still music playing. You can hear it. It's not off. I haven't turned it off. It was just, all right, now I can just, let me jack it up. Let me, yeah. let me go, let me go harder. And it's, it's based on seasons. It's based on what I have the bandwidth to do at any given time. And for these next two weeks, I have the bandwidth and I'm going to, I'm going to give it, I have an incentive to do it. And when I come back, it'll probably be normal volume. Yeah. There you go. So anybody listening to take a few things out of that, like when it comes down to the bare bones of like, what the heck should you do? Come up with your plan based on like you, <laughs> like mm -hmm. what Jeff just described is based on his circumstance, what he's doing, what he knows he can handle. If you've got like no capacity whatsoever, don't take all that on. <laughs> just do a few things like the basics, like the two things Jeff mentioned, like we're you're working out and you're eating protein and fiber. Cool. And that'll get a lot of people really, really good results. But the thing to remember is that like you all, 
right now you're embracing almost like the same thing that like Aram teaches where it's like four weeks to the beach. You're in that position to be able to do this. Now, most people are not in that position to get where they can just turn it up and get to the place they want to be. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people listening right now just know two weeks isn't going to fix it. But if you can get yourself to the point where you can dial it up for two weeks, that's like the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I always, I, I was talking about this too with another client today. Like, I like to think about this. Like I have a happy medium, like where I can just kind of live, you know, and you know, put everything by the scale, but it's just like, all right, I, I, I basically am this weight plus or minus three or four pounds, you know, depending on the circumstances. And I can yep. just live, live in that. Now that's a six to eight pound flux, you know, from the top end to the bottom end. But it's, I, I basically am just, I can comfortably live at a certain place. And then if I want to dial it up, I'll go there. And if I need to dial it back, I can dial it back. But that, that takes a lot of time to get to that point. And so, and it starts with just the basic habits, but the idea that like in two weeks, I'm going to do like, when I say it's like our mini cut, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not prepping for a show here. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like I'm going to walk on the beach and turn heads and be cutting glass with my abs and carved out of granite, like Zac Efron and Baywatch. Like, no, I'm going to just going to, I'm just like, Hey, I'm going to tighten up a little bit over the next couple of weeks and just feel my best going into it. And it doesn't, you know, the stakes aren't, but like, I could also not do it. That's the key is I want to get to a point and like, this is what I, I deem kind of the fit life. This is kind of my kind of phrasing on it, which is like my fit life is I could go to right now, take my shirt off and be fine. Like if I didn't do this, I would, I would have a great vacation and feel competent. And I don't know if there's a dramatic difference between how I'm going to feel after two weeks of doing this, but it's just kind of like more of a fun experiment. And that's my fit life. Like, I don't, I don't care to walk around where I'm like turning people's heads on the beach and I won't ever. Um, but I, I want to be able to like not worry about it when I take my shirt off. I, I want to be able to more importantly, like, I'm not training for, I, I did a post with, I'm not, I didn't spend all winter training for my beach body. I trained for my pool body. The one who can throw my kid up and down in the pool for 26 minutes straight, like higher daddy. He called it a whale. <laughs> He's like, I'm a really big whale because he would splash. He's like, I want an even bigger whale. Like that was what we were like the biggest whale of all time. And he would just make whale noises as I threw him up. Like that was, <laughs> that was us in the pool. Like that's what I trained for. Like I wanted to feel confident to take my shirt off, hop in there and everybody's going to take a thousand photos and videos and I'm going to be proud of them in 15 years when I'm looking back and be like, Oh, remember when he was cute and fun and wouldn't it be nice if he called us, <laughs> you know, sort of thing <laughs> like that sort of moment. But it's, uh, it's also like to be able to show up and, and do the thing where, all right, from four until bedtime, I'm chasing the kids around and wrestling and daddy one more. And it's like, okay, like, it's not a question of one more. Yeah. And that's the key thing to remember is like, it's more about what you can do, not how you look. And they, they both have a place, you yeah. know, like I, I think that um, we can go both, both sides of it. But like the reason why I, I think the, how you look thing, if we dig deeper for most people, it's, it's not, just like how you look but like your ability to do things and feel the freedom to do those things like i had uh, a client who early on like when we first had our call before we started working together she like wouldn't take her shirt off to go swimming with her daughter and i've told this story before i don't know if i've told it on here but um uh, she like wouldn't wouldn't because she didn't feel comfortable in a bathing suit and so her, her daughter would ask her and she's like no like i'm, I'm that mommy's gonna sit here and you know ask daddy and so then daddy would do it and then the summer before we started working together she stopped asking and it wasn't like malicious she wasn't mad at mom she had just learned through time that swimming's a dad activity and mom doesn't go swimming and her daughter was seven at the time and she's like i have like two or three summers left where she cares and I'm not going to miss these opportunities. So it was, it was how she felt, 
but how she felt was impacting what she felt the freedom to do. And she was missing out on life because of how she felt about herself or what she was physically, you know what I mean? Like, so when we think about like what we're able to do, it's oftentimes just like, when I talk about the fit life, it's the freedom to say yes to the things that we want to say yes to without hesitation, guilt, or fear, self-consciousness. Like, so do I need to cut more to go on this, you know, to go on this trip? No, but it's, it's that freedom piece is, is fitness is about freedom. You know, that is a great spot to drop the mic Boom. and just land it right there. Well, that was a lot. And I know that a lot of people listening right now are just kind of like taking a moment where it's like, let's just take that all in. Let's sit with it. And please do. If you have to hit pause right here, please do. But I can't let you go without Jeff letting you know where to find his stuff because I know there are some people going, I want to see more of Jeff. I want I want him on my feed. So for those people, where should they find you? Uh, on Instagram, Jeff Delzell Fitness, D-A-L-Z-E-L-L. Um, Fit Parent Podcast, Brian's been on a couple times. Um I have a website now. It's so official. It took me four years nice. to build a website. Just as a side note, like and there's a there's a fitness. Good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it should be after four years, but like that, there's a fitness lesson <laughs> in there somewhere, right? Like do the things that matter. You know, become a good coach before you build a website. Um, so that's JeffDalzellFitness.com. Um, a lot of free resources there for you to download, and and uh, you can get on my email list. And I send out some good stuff there. Awesome. Awesome. And as always, if you guys heard anything that really resonated and you have that friend or that family member in your head, that's like, they really need to hear what Jeff just said, go ahead and send them this podcast episode. Tell them that we say hi. And that being said, until next time, I will see you all same time, same place next week. But until then, go kick some ass. I'll see you all later.